Arch Manning's junior football season has come to a close and now the recruiting battle is heating up. In this video, we're going to look back at how successful his junior season was. We'll take a look at his playoff performances and just kind of give a broad assessment on how he looks compared to prior years. Of course, we'll go over the latest developments on his recruitment trail. We've got some new recent updates on which schools Arch is currently favoriting and which schools are in danger of getting cut. I definitely also want to touch on Brian Kelly going to LSU and how that affects Arch's chances of going there. And finally, we have to analyze the recent video leaked of Arch laying in bed alongside what's presumably a friend or girlfriend, where details on his recruitment were discussed. A lot of juicy details to get through today, so be sure to stay tuned. As a whole, Arch's junior year was another massive success. A lot of things could have derailed the whole offense, like Arch's number one receiver suddenly transferring before the season began, and Hurricane Ida interrupting all football activities. But luckily, Newman could rely on Arch as a third year starter now, and that helped the team go 7 and 3 and reach the state semifinals. If you're wondering, that's also as far as Peyton could take Newman back in the early 90s and Eli took Newman as far as the quarterfinals in the late 90s. When the team faced its best opponents, it felt like they were overmatched. Arch would struggle moving the ball downfield, but he would still occasionally unleash a play worthy of his five-star status. So if you go through and look at his game logs and start to get a little worried, I would chalk that up more as a team purely undermatched due to the nature of high school sports. I mean, Arch's coach Nelson Stewart has even said that Arch has been forced to take some velocity off his balls to accommodate his receivers. I think if I were to point to anything, the biggest difference I saw this year was more breakaway speed from Arch. We've always known his mechanics and reads as top notch for his age, and that continues to be the case. But this year, it seemed he really started looking more like a dual threat player. Part of that could be out of necessity for when his receivers just weren't open, but it's also the best sign yet that he inherited his grandfather's speed. So moving on to the recruiting, we have reports from On3 and 24-7 Sports that a variety of schools visited Newman last week. We might as well begin with LSU as the Brian Kelly hiring recently shocked the college football world. Nelson Stewart said the hiring was good and that Kelly is phenomenal at what he does. LSU seemed to be trending down for Arch and he wasn't interested in playing for Kelly at Notre Dame. So the question is, would the combo of those two work? My take is probably not, but Kelly does provide some stability to the program. LSU's current offensive coordinator Jake Peets was at Newman this past week. It's not clear what Peets' future is, but LSU was at least represented. Joe Burrow obviously had the success under the Joe Brady-Jake Peets system. That kind of blows away what anyone did at Notre Dame in the past 10 years was under Kelly with tough to compare anyone to Burrow, but I think Arch has his sights set farther than the Kaiser line. Ole Miss brought in offensive coordinator Jeff Lebby, and it wasn't long ago that Lane Kiffin was at Newman. Meanwhile, Texas brought back Steve Sarkeesian along with quarterbacks coach A.J. Milwee and defensive backs coach Terry Joseph. So Texas, as they've done in the past when Arch visited the school, is once again pulling out all the stops. The truth about Arch Manning and his commitment is that Lane Kiffin and Steve Sarkeesian want him more than anyone else. And you can bet Arch and his family know that as well. The question is, does the idea of an easier path to a championship at a place like Alabama beat out the instinctual human element of feeling wanted? Obviously, Nick Saban wants Arch, but he isn't going out of his way like Kiffin and Sarkeesian. Kiffin pulls off the humorous social media follower thing while Sarkeesian becomes good buddies with Arch's high school coach. There are multiple things those two are doing that no other coaching staff is. And that might make a difference in the end. Then when you pair Ole Miss's success with Matt Corral this year and their improvements as a team taking steps closer to playoff contention, well that may just be the winning formula for an Arch Manning commitment. Earlier this year I was leaning Texas and still think Arch has quite the connection with Sarkeesian, but 
when they show up like they did this year to the point where they were hosting recruits who were laughing at their pitiful performance, it's hard to envision a quarterback with his pick of the litter opting to go there. Arch probably wasn't laughing at Texas, but I don't think he's immune to the current on-field product and how it affects the future of the program, whether that was Sarkeesian's first year or not. Arch made it clear that the relationship building with the coaching staffs is the most important part of his recruitment. Right now, Kiffin and Sarkeesian are acing it. Oh yeah, now let's get to the leaked video. Arch Manning is coming uh, to Ole Miss, <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. Hi, Tyler. Yeah! It's important to remember that Arch has been on film before jokingly saying he was going to Mississippi State. So, should we take this video with a grain of salt? Maybe. But he's also said Oxford is like a second home to him. And he's called Lane Kiffin and Jeff Levy some of the smartest offensive minds he's ever met. And finally, he also loves Matt Corral and has built a relationship with him. On to Clemson now, passing game coordinator Brandon Streeter has been on the arch recruitment for a while, and he was at Newman as well. One potentially good sign for Clemson, Texas, and LSU fans is their interest in one of Arch's favorite targets, tight end Will Randall. If their paths were to line up in college, I'm sure Arch would consider that a positive. And with Clemson, like I said before, it's better to take a bigger sample size of what Dabo Sweeney has been able to do, rather than just focus on one disappointing year. And Nelson Stewart has backed that up on what Arch is looking for when it relates to Clemson. Alabama and Georgia have done nothing but help their causes for Arch this year with their on-field performance. Arch wants to compete for a championship, and these two would obviously be contenders for that. Alabama has become an offensive firepower, producing multiple Heisman contending quarterbacks recently. Georgia has won with its defense, but Kirby Smart visited Arch in October, and I'm sure he's salivating at the idea of a Georgia defense with Arch Manning manning the offense and that's all we've got for today as always let me know where you think arch will commit and if you think this information changes anything be sure to subscribe if you want more content just like this you know i told arch all these are you know shiny red ferraris they're all gonna look great he'll just kind of learn his way through it here and then figure out kind of what's the best fit when it's time and, and i don't think he's in a huge rush I mean, he's only He's got two more years of high school. Everything kind of starts a little early, but you got to get ahead of the curve and at least be educated in what's out there.